Well, hey guys, I just left the bank and I'm on my way to Costco. Uh, exciting update in the neighborhood. Uh, if you live here, you've probably heard of the Darth Vader house or driven by it. I mentioned it once in a video. I was talking about how this house... Uh, it looks like Darth Vader uh, and it's massive, but it's kind of creepy at the same time. Like It looks like a compound where you would go to, I don't know, build chips to put in people's heads. Uh, anyways, exciting news, it's for sale. You can have it for the low, low price of $4.3 million. Oh, there it is, yeah. I should drive by the front of it, but um, I'm not in a turn lane. So you could see it in the on the front. It actually looks like Darth Vader. And I was watching the like little realtor video of it. It's kind of cool on the inside. Interesting house, but yeah, that's a little little update. So I'm wearing the new Avan Mineral sunscreen, the non-tinted one. Um, you guys can get a sense of what it looks like in natural lighting. Pothole. Um, I feel the need to warn you guys of that because I know it's rattly. Anyways, uh, yeah, you can get a, get a sense of what it looks like in natural lighting. I'm always getting a request to recommend mineral sunscreens without a white cast. Aside from the tinted ones, which even those can still leave a cast, you're not going to find a sunscreen that has zinc in it that will not leave a cast for somebody. Um, it just doesn't exist. And even the name, like I wish, I wish sunscreen manufacturers or whatever brands would stop saying sheer zinc. I think that really makes people pissed off because they buy it thinking it's going to be clear, like clear zinc, sheer zinc. You put it on and there's still a white cast. Like, don't fool people with that. Um, so yeah, you're not gonna find a mineral sunscreen that doesn't have a bit of a cast. For me, even this leaves a cast, kind of a, a cast. It's a little on the shiny side. You know what it looks like? La Roche-Posay came out with a sunscreen this year that's uh, SPF 30. It's a mineral sunscreen with hyaluronic acid. This kind of looks a little bit like that, but that, that one has less of a cast. This is SPF 50. Uh, whereas that one, I think is 30. I promoted that product over on Instagram. It's actually pretty good if you're looking for a really moisturizing sunscreen, but it's obvious, you know, it's selling points and it has hyaluronic acid in it. I know some of you are easy, your skin is easily irritated by hyaluronic acid. Uh, so you would want to avoid that if that's you, but, uh, yeah, you know, people with hyaluronic acid, I feel like the ordinary, I blame, <laughs> because I feel like they were one of the first brands where they really popularized all of these different hyaluronic acid serums and whatnot. I remember there was like a giant bottle they had at one point of hyaluronic acid. And it's, it's a great ingredient in moisturizers and it certainly can improve skin hydration and plump up the look of fine lines and wrinkles. I love using it, but you guys have to bear in mind that I basically live in a, in a water bottle. <laughs> It's so humid here. So hyaluronic acid works quite well in my skincare. But people, some people, their, their skin is easily irritated by topical hyaluronic acid, especially excessive, uh, you know, use of it. Because it can increase penetration of other ingredients. And if you're using something that has an ingredient that's irritating, uh, you know, using it alongside hyaluronic, hyaluronic acid increases that chance. Plus, the smaller weight sizes, in theory, you know, they kind of look like they're, they're hyaluronic acid like fragments that when you have a skin, have skin injury down in the dermis, that gets released and it actually alerts your immune system to kind of come in and generate the inflammatory response that is the initial part of wound healing. Um, so in theory, putting it on your skin, you know, you might query if it gets into the skin deep enough, could it trigger that and cause irritation and inflammation? I've always wondered that. But you see, brands, they're not going to do that kind of level of, of studying. So we'll never know. We'll never know how much I really care. Listen, do you want?
want to know a secret. Speaking of the ordinary, I was reading an article somewhere, I can't remember, on the top brands, skincare brands worldwide. Number one brand is The Ordinary. I remember when The Ordinary first became a thing and people really put it on this pedestal and they have continued to put it on a pedestal and they have great some great products, don't get me wrong, but they have a lot of goofy ones too and they always kind of, they're see what set The Ordinary apart when they came out is that they wanted to distinguish, distinguish themselves as being A, affordable, and B, very no-nonsense, like not, you know, trying to be super transparent as far as the ingredients and that they were evidence-based and all of this stuff. And to a certain extent, I would say that's true with their products, but at the same time, they have a lot of goofy stuff in there too. People have a lot of trust for the ordinary. I think that's going to start dwindling, especially now that they sold the company to Estee Lauder. Um, but it's like they, oftentimes they can do no harm. Like I can say in a video, hair growth serums are complete BS, but what about the ordinary? Like, like clearly the ordinary, I think people put put the ordinary on such a pedestal that they think that there's going to be an exception when it comes to the ordinary. Um, and that's not true. Like their retinols all have that hydroxypinacolone retinoate thing. They were the ones who popularized using that and claim making people think that they, that that was retinol and that that worked the same as retinol. Well, we have, you know, no, it is, it's like a retinol ester. Like, no, it's not working the same. This is person just tries to take me out here by pulling in front of me. So they are not always, you know, playing with 52 um, when it comes to the stuff that, that they have. Like, I can say that I don't have much faith in vitamin C serums. Well, what about the ordinary? Like, wh why would why would that be an exception? And the ordinary, they're, they're the ones that have that goofy vitamin C powder, like taking it even to a goofier level. <laughs> what about the ordinary? When I first started on YouTube, you know what brand was really like had a, I don't want to say, I don't like saying cult following because that, I just think we shouldn't be glorifying cults. Anyways, <laughs> uh, was Paula's Choice. Every video I put out, in the first, I would say, 13 months of my channel, we'll just say, I would always get comments. I'd love it if you would review Paula's Choice. I'd love it if you would review Paula's Choice. I'd love it if you would review Paula's Choice. Sometimes I would even question, like, are these people asking for the Paula's Choice review products? Actual um, people, <laughs> actual people, actual viewers, actual YouTube watchers, or are they little marketing people. I've always, I've often suspected that. I, I know it sounds a little bit um, paranoid, but when you get a certain type of comment over and over again, a part of you does have to wonder if it's not some kind of a marketing bot. Because I do know, I'm kind of going off on a tangent here, I do know that brands put out, this is a common thing, brands put out um, listening devices, listening, I don't know what it is, some kind of internet coding snake thing, some kind of internet coding caterpillar thing that listens on the internet and whenever their brand is mentioned, they can chime in or, you know, be alerted to that. Uh, and I have always suspected that that can be used to promote your brand in this kind of subtle way through the comments section of videos. I, I, call me paranoid, but I feel like, you know, the comments section, it probably feels like to the viewer that they're just there as a watcher and everybody in the comments is like, it's like you guys are sitting in a movie theater together and you're just commenting on what you're watching. But I think, <laughs> paranoid, but I'm telling you, from my viewpoint where I see the volume of these things, I, I do think I'm onto something. Um, I think that sometimes brands show up in the comments to make it seem like their product 
is where it's at and pretend, you know, they kind of act anonymous. Like for example, they might say something like, well, I've been using this for six months. It is the best thing. You know, another, another product that was like that um, was the Australian Gold Botanical Sunscreen. Now I know people love that. And personally, I don't have anything objectively bad to say about it on paper. It just caused a lot of irritation for me. But when I reviewed that a long, long, long time ago, I mean, I thought I was gonna have to hire a bodyguard because there were people who were so livid that that didn't work for me. Um, that I was moderately fearful for my health. Um, uh, but there was so much bizarre enthusiasm. There was an individual who commented on every video and would comment on people's comments. Have you tried Australian gold? Have you tried Australian gold? And it's like, do you work for Australian gold botanical? Like what the, this is, my lug bag that I'm always raving about, um, that I love. My lo I love my lug bag. It's my second one. And what I like about it is that it has the RFID thing on it so people cannot um, scan your bag and steal your credit card information. But what I have noticed is that I like to listen to, what is it, Spotify? I listen to podcasts in the car. And if I have my phone in the RFID part of it, or if I have my phone in my bag, period, it will not connect to the uh, to the Bluetooth audio in my car, um, so I have to have my my phone out, and I think it's because of that RFID stuff. I think it blocks the signal for the Bluetooth for Bluetooth, um, and yeah, I don't know why I felt compelled to tell you guys that. Like you, I, I oh my God, you guys, the Disney short pajama sets are back definitely snagging these because they are incredibly comfortable should I get these with mini I'm not like a Disney person um, as a matter of fact as a child I don't really recall being that into Disney movies but these are so comfortable highly recommend them these faux wicker baskets are nice with the handles 1999 dark brown and what is that? Ash. Ooh, a faux leather desk set. Just what I don't need. <laughs> it's nice. It comes with like um, a thing for file folders. How cute is this pasta? <laughs> it looks like it's dyed with beet, tomato, and spinach. And curcumin for the yellow. Well, hey guys, I am obviously back from Costco and running errands, and I just went for a run on the treadmill and I'm gonna stretch it for a bit. But I wanted to show you guys this. I ordered some stuff from Avan and I got a free tote. And it's so cute, I don't know if you guys can see. It's got these little swimmers on it. I just thought it was adorable. It's actually a pretty nice tote for like the beach or whatever or like the pool um and it doesn't have tacky branding all over it there's just a little thing here that says in the corner says oven um i thought it was cute it was free with um sunscreen purchases that i made so yeah while i don't wear makeup once upon a dream i bought makeup when i was a ballet dancer and i would i would always buy Clinique makeup because it was the only makeup that didn't aggravate my skin for ballet and I I would wait until they had a good free gift. They always had the best like little gift bags so yeah I also got a little free sample of the Retronail 0.1 um, This is their retinaldehyde cream. It's really a good product um, so I got that and then a little thing of the Sicalfate Plus, um, which is a good moisturizer. So yeah, tea time. I'm going to make one of my tea lattes here in my Secura milk frother. I love this thing. Just fill her up. I've got the uh, creamy cashew milk here. 
And I'm gonna do the Hibiscus Beauty Elixir from Peak Tea. I have a discount code. Um, highly recommend these, they're really good. And I'm just gonna sweeten it with some of these sweet leaf coconut drops. My one gripe with this milk brother is that it's supposed to make like hot chocolates and stuff, but it doesn't hold very much milk to do that, to like make a full cup. So I just boil some water on the side and bring it up in water and it comes out perfect. Yeah, this is seriously one of my favorite peak tea flavors, the Hibiscus Beauty Elixir. It's really good, especially good with the uh, coconut stevia. Well, hey guys, I just got out of the shower and I'm gonna put on my Retin-A here. Um, for my moisturizer, I actually put on this Rovectin. I think I mentioned this, was it this one I mentioned? This is one of the Rovectin moisturizers that I happen to like and it's really good. I use it on my face and on body. Um, it's great. It's pretty lightweight, but it does a really nice job actually sealing in hydration and kind of gives the skin a healthy glow. I can't remember all of the ingredients in it, but I know that it has good ones. <laughs> um, check out my video on Korean skincare that I'm loving. One of my recent K-Beauty videos, I reviewed it. Um, they also have a thicker version of this. It's like a cream. That's really good. I recently finished the Aveeno Calm and Restore Oat Gel Moisturizer. I love that one. This is another great face and body moisturizer. Well, the Aveeno Calm and Restore Oat Gel Moisturizer is too little for the body, but um, speaking of body products, I'm gonna grease up my feet here with the Eucerin Roughness Relief. This has been awesome for my heels and whatnot. Anyways, what I was saying earlier, <laughs> You guys are like, where is she going? I'm greasing my feet. What I was saying earlier about how sometimes I feel like comment sections of videos get, I don't wanna say biased, but I feel like there's a presence from an unknown source that can take over and skew the, and influence the audience. And I always wonder about if it's brands have like their marketing team comment on videos anonymously about how great a product is. I've always wondered that. Or if, you know, people who work for companies do that. Um, boom, just like that. I'm wearing my Lucky PJs from Costco. I ended up putting back those Mickey PJs that you saw me grab in Costco because I was like, wait a minute, you already have two pairs of these. Just because you like them doesn't mean that you need more. I try and, Costco gets me. I'm not really an impulse shopper except at Costco. I mean, that's how they're, that's how they, they operate, <laughs> Costco. But I have to say, the majority of things I buy at Costco, I truly love and use and talk about and all the time. You guys are like, yeah, we get it, you're a Costco fan. But sometimes I, I really just have to rein in. Like I almost bought these melamine bowls that were on, they were on sale, it was a really good deal. Melamine bowls with a lid that you could put on. And I thought it was great, because you know, I chop up, like if I buy a head of iceberg, I'll chop it up and make like a kind of a salad and eat off of it throughout the week. And I thought that would be good to have. But I already have Pyrex bowls with lids on them. I don't need melamine bowls too. I mean, I'm only one person. <laughs> I'm not like <laughs> batch prepping all of these prepared salads in advance for one person. Speaking of impulse purchase, this is not an impulse. I've had this in my cart from Amazon for a while. These claw clamps, they came today. They're really popular. Lisa Lisa D1 talks about these. She says they're really good. Um, so I, you guys know I have a ton of claw clamps. So I was like, do I really need more? But I finally went with them because they look promising. I like that they are so long too. So typically I have to tap two claw clamps. Let's see if it's fat enough. Oh yeah. Ooh. Fat with a pH. With a PhD. I don't know who I am. Anyways guys, 
<laughs> I'm gonna wrap up the vlog here. Thank you so much for making it to the end. I greatly appreciate it. And if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.